وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. Allah رب العزة describing the role of the Rasul عليه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم says we have not sent you as anything else except as a mercy to the worlds. For those who are comfortable with Arabic language, Allah Rabbul Izzah didn't say, Inna arsalnaka rahmatan lil'alameen. We have sent you as a mercy to the worlds. Had he Azza wa Jal said that, it would have been possible to mean that we have sent you as a mercy plus other things. There would have been room for other additions to the role. But Allah Rabbul Izza makes it very explicit and negates all else. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ And we have not sent you illa except as in a single purpose and that is رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ that you are as a mercy to the worlds. And my brothers and sisters, there are certain situations in which mercy comes naturally. In certain situations in which mercy is very difficult. For example, if you see a little child dying of hunger, mercy is natural. If you, I have watched YouTube clips of baby deers, of little kids uh, deer, uh, being protected by a tiger or a lion or a lioness. Because even that baby li or that lion has mercy towards a little babe. So if you see a little child and you have in your heart fills up with mercy, uh, you, it's not an achievement. It's normal. You're supposed to show mercy. But to show mercy in places where it is totally out of range, that qualifies you for being merciful. I just want to use one incident in the life of the Rasul to, to establish this verse. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he came to Medina, uh, there were different categories of people. So there were those who were honest Muslims to the bone. And those who are Muslims on face, but disbelievers at heart. This is called the category of the munafiqun, the people who are hypocrites. So they are people who show Islam on their face and have disbelief in their hearts. Although there's another category of nifaq in which you are a believer, but your deeds are deeds of hypocrisy. But the one I am interested in today is hypocrites who are disbelievers in the essence of their hearts, but put on a facade of Islam. So the king of the Munafiqs, the leader of the Munafiqs, uh, is a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Remember the name. He is the leader of the hypocrites. So this man harmed Islam and harmed the Prophet and harmed the very household of the Rasul uh, and on endless occasions. So for example, uh, there was the first campaign of Islam which is Badr and you know the story of that and Allah granted the Muslims victory. The Quraysh swore revenge. They came a year later for the battle of Uhud. Now the Muslims decided to go out and meet this army and the adversaries, the enemies, are 3,000. So 1,000 Muslims marched out to meet them. How many? 1,000 Muslims marched out to meet them. Halfway to the battle, halfway to the campaign, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul decides, I am not going anymore. Me and my men will turn back to the city. Any army general, any person who's watched, forget about an army general, if you've watched military movies, you understand that when 30% uh, of the army turns back, the morale of the rest will fall. 
You know, you will start having second thoughts. What am I doing? Forget about a battle. If you go to a picnic, 10 people going and three of you decide we're not going anymore, you start having doubts. Maybe it's not a good idea. So it damaged the morale of the Muslims. It, you know, it, at, at, and he did it deliberately, meticulously, you know, maliciously at a point where he should have been there besides the Rasul. And, and, and then when the Muslims suffered and 70 more and more Muslims were, were uh, martyred in the battle of Uhud. This man has the audacity to say, if you had taken my advice, none of this would have happened. So you see he's militarily, strategically hurt the deen. Uh, and then on another campaign, he is there with the Prophet. It's a long, tedious campaign. And in it, he, get, he gathers a group of people and says, When we go back to Medina, we, the honorable, will kick out the dishonorable. As in these new Muslims, the Prophet and his people, Allah forbid, we will kick them out of the city. And then on another campaign, he saw our mother Aisha radiallahu anha tarry back from the caravan and he made, uh, you know, uh, abusive claims about her, which Allah has recorded in the Quran and Allah Rabbul Izzah took her out clean and pure from that. So he's, he's damaged, the, you know, he's attacked the household of the Prophet, the honor of the Rasul, the, the dignity of Islam, he's done what he's done. So subhanalladhi biyadihi al-maqadir, time passes, and now the same man, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul, is on his deathbed. His son is a righteous man. You know, his son is a strong sahabi of the Prophet. And subhanallah, in the days where he was strong, as in the father was alive and kicking, um, and he heard what he had done to the Rasul. The son came to the, to the Prophet, Ya Rasul, if you want to order his execution, tell me to do it. Because I can't see someone else execute my father and walk in the cities, in the streets of Medina. So if you need to do it, tell me I'll do it. So the Prophet said, no, we will bear with your father patiently. So now anyway, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul is on his deathbed and shortly he dies. So listen to this. Now the son comes to the Rasul, O Prophet of Allah. My father has died. Can you give me your thawb, your garb, your personal clothing to coffin my father in? And this is an honor not available to most of the Ashab. There are very few that can claim, you know, I was buried in the, in the dress of the Rasul. Yet this man has come. He's not asking for Umar or Abu Bakr. He's asking for, the, for Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Give me your thawb for him. And you see rahmatul lil alameen. Take it off and say here. Go coffin your father in this. Then he comes, O oh Prophet, lead the salah of his janazah. Like you put yourself in that position, someone who's insulted your family, someone who has uh, tried to, you know, create division in the ranks of your army, someone who caused um, implicitly the loss of some 70 of your companions, uh, you, your blood will boil from your toe to your head. Uh, you know, he's dead, alhamdulillah, my Allah put him in the depths of hell. The natural reaction. But the Rasul says, I will come and lead the Salat of Janazah. Like, uh, what type of heart did you have, Ya Rasul? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes. And can you, can you visualize? The Rasul alayhi afdalu salatu wa tammu taslim is standing. The janazah of Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul is there. And the best of the creation after the Prophet is lined up behind him to pray on this head of the hypocrites. And as he's about to start, Umar ibn al-Khattab comes and stands here between the Prophet and the Janazah. 
And he says, Ya, ya Rasul, this is Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. So the Prophet says, I know, move from me, Umar. So he says, Ya Rasul, he is the one who said, لَإِنْ رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ This is the one that said, when we go to Medina, the honored will kick out the dishonorable. The Rasul said, I know, move, Ya Umar. He said, he is the one that forsook Uhud. He says, I know, Ya Umar, move. So, and then the Umar insists. So the Prophet said, Allah has given me a choice. Ask forgiveness for them, or don't ask forgiveness for them. And if you were to ask the verse, 70 times forgiveness, I will not forgive them. So the Rasul said, if I know that if I ask 71 times and Allah on the 71st one will forgive him, I will ask 71 times, Ya Rabb, forgive him. You see, Rahmatul Lil Alameen. So the Prophet stood, alayhi salatu wasalam, and led the salat of Janazah. On this hypocrite, and when he finished, Jibreel came with the verses, don't stand on their graves ever again, nor seek forgiveness for them ever. So this became forbidden after the Prophet wasallam showed this monumental uh, expression of mercy to those who by any standard didn't deserve it. If it was a military court, if the man was court martialed, he would have been executed at Uhud. You know, you forsook the battlefield, sweetheart. So therefore, uh, my dear brothers, let's, it is time for us as Muslims to understand the real mission of the Rasul. And that was a mercy to the worlds. A mercy to the worlds. May Allah Rabbul Izzah grant us the capacity to embody the mission of the Rasul. فَقُلْتُ مَا قُلْتِ انْتَكُوا حَسَنَةً فَمِنَ اللَّهُ وَانْتَكُوا سَيِّئَةً فَمِنَ نَفْسِ وَالشَّيْطَانُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ